Hey guys, Jason, the X for Cinelinks.com, and I have the pleasure of talking to the lovely Miss Louise Linton. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good morning. I'm terrific this morning. How are you? I'm just fine. Now, you're starring in the new movie, Intruders, an IFC Midnight film, which I had the joy of seeing, and I must say I was thoroughly impressed by it. Well, thank you very much. It was um, a long journey, and it was a lot of work as uh, both producer and actress, but um, it's 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 a film I feel I'm really proud of and excited about. Well, you should. You should. It 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 really. Um, it really works. That whole legitimate fears that you have when you're by yourself in your home, and that psychological aspect of it really shows. Well, and it's a relatable fear, isn't it? I mean, everyone here is a bump in the night, and everyone, be you male or female, young or old, you sort of sit up and you can feel the hairs on the back of your neck go up and you can wonder, God, is there someone here? Am I just imagining it? And so frequently we all just say, oh, I'm just imagining it. And um, But in this in this movie, she's not imagining it. <laughs> I think you certainly made a few people not just say, oh, that's just a random noise and I'll ignore it. I think you have, after watching this movie, a couple people are going to go, no, I'm going to go check that noise out fully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's funny because a bunch of my friends came to the premiere in Los Angeles and um, I got rather angry text messages from them afterwards saying, thanks a lot. Now I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm going to have to check under my bed and behind the shower curtain and every single door in the house. Oh, that's just brilliant. I'm going to have to find a boyfriend so that I don't have to sleep alone at night. <laughs> a boyfriend or a really big dog would probably help. As well. right, right. Certainly not a cat. We know that's not going to help No, you. the cat did not work at all. That did not work. The cat did not work. <laughs> we don't want to be it was such a funny reaction in the premiere I mean it was the first time I'd actually seen the movie up on the big screen and people actually laughed every time the cat came on the screen I think it was just such a stress relief <laughs> so, and it was um, it was a it was a fabulous reaction to, to see in person now it is a small cast movie and I, I I like small cast movies where it's it's really dependent on we, we, maybe the focus point of the movie was maybe four to five actors, and yeah. it was done so well. It, it, I like when you can do a lot with a little, which is certainly what was done here. But now you're saying there was a lot more work that went into this movie. Oh, my gosh. I can't even begin to describe how much work went into this movie. We we filmed it very quickly after we had the script, and... Um, we managed to shoot it, I think, within a couple of weeks up in Portland, Oregon. The entire set that you see of the apartment was built from scratch. That apartment oh, wow. didn't exist. None of those, none of those walls exist. None of the, uh, you know, they painted it basically. The director Travis is a production designer as well, and he's done, I think, over 50 films. So um, he, um, he he was very involved with our production designer in, in making that apartment and making it feel very real. So we shot we shot the movie three years ago, and then we um, we showed it to Cassie and Elwes, who's um, you know a, a very well respected independent filmmaker. Uh, he did you know D- Dallas Buyers Club and The Butler, and he said, "My gosh, this is a great film. I'd love to invest in it and, beca- and come on as an EP. But I think you guys need to go and shoot a new ending, a new beginning, and add a couple more characters." So one year later, we found ourselves back in Portland, Oregon, shooting additional scenes and. Um, and then, you know, when you are working um, with, a, a, you know, an independent budget, then, you know, my, my, my first experience as a producer is that you will have so many unanticipated um, things come up and challenges. It, there's no way to ever anticipate all the things you're going to have to deal with, editing and um, deliverables and post-production. Oh, my gosh. But um, it, it feels like it was really worth it. <laughs> I think it'll be easier for I think the, the the next ones have been and will be and can, will continue to be much easier than that one that that was our first ever um movie as first time producers my my business partner and I so uh, many lessons learned <laughs> well to know that uh Travis Serrini, who, uh, who who was the director he was involved in the set building and everything as well wow that's, there, a lot of talent there Yes, you know, he, he we, between the two of us, we we wore a lot of hats. 
and um, we really um, became a sort of symbiotic in a way. In order to get the movie done, we really relied on each other. Now, when you wear a lot of hats with something like this, it seems more of a labor of love, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's something more that you... you no, which it, it certainly was, yeah. Because you, you have all this going into the movie. It's like, oh, I just did this part, I just did this part. But it seems like when you have more to do with it, you have more riding on the success of the film as well. Yeah, that's right. I, mean, I think we all invested so so much time in this film and... As I said, it was our, our first experience as producers, and so we the, the learning curve was pretty steep. But when you, you know, and I, speaking as an actress, I know that if I just show up on someone else's set, you know, it, I, I maybe don't have the same um, level of consciousness about what the amount of work that's going into it. But as a producer, when you're hiring people and um oh, wow. you know you're you're observing the amount of work that they're doing you realize you realize how much goes into every little movie gives you, little, movie, you know. gives you a little bit more pride though huh <laughs> yes yes i well, i'm actually really really proud of this film it it, it um you know when you're when you're doing it when you're working on a small budget you can <clears throat> you're not you might not end up with the best products but i think that we ended up with something that we were all really really proud of so when you were first looking at the script for this movie because we spend as the audience we spend a lot of time just in this movie watching you in peril but you are unknowing of it the whole time and it's I, that's the part where it's like, because honestly, you, I mean, yes, there are parts of the movie where you're you're looking around and everything, but you spend most of the movie in peril, but unaware of everything. Right. So thinking, when, thinking about the Philharmonic, <laughs> practicing the cello while there's a murder. You, that. You're, you're doing your <laughs> normal life, just, yeah, practicing the cello and taking care of your, your friend's cat and everything. And Also, John Robinson's so good in this movie. I really liked his character as well, uh, the interactions you two had. Considering there's not a lot of cast interaction, but he's the one you interact with the most. Did you... Um did you feel as though he was a suspicious person, or did you feel as though he was a reliable person? Not to give no, no, no. I was, spoilers. I was on the fence. And I um, I think when you look at the character, you don't want him to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, I mean, we, and we, we, we've got... We've got everybody's a suspect as well. That's the other thing. We get that. We get that nice murder, not murder, but that mystery element. Like, who is who is the bad guy here? It's, can we go for right. the obvious person? And just the way the film was shot and everything with the filmography, you can't tell. You get little inklings every now and then because when you look at like the body structure of each of our suspects, they're not too different. So. Those shots you do yeah. get, um, and, and the, the stalker aspect of it, you can't really make a determination, and I, I really, really like that part. Good. Did you did you wait um, to watch the final uh, secret scene that we embedded in the final credits? Yes, I did, of course. Because I stopped, I, and, I'll, and I'll admit, I stopped the movie at the end, and I was kind of, was just kind of like, oh, my God, whoa. And I was like, wait a minute, there's something in... There seems to be a little bit more here. Let me just go ahead and play. And yes, I did catch that last bit there. Well, so, I really, I really do hope people don't miss it. I hope that they um, sit and and wait because it's almost like one of those Marvel moments where it's worth you know just seeing whatever little second thing they tack on at the end there. But we submerged it pretty deep in to the credits, so. My fear, I suppose, is that people won't actually see that last scene, which is it's a good payoff, I think, for having sat through the, the hour and a half of tension. You, you, it, oh, the, it, the ending is revealed, I suppose. <laughs> and I don't want to give out too much, because the movie was still out uh, June 24th. It comes out um, on video on yeah, demand. So feel free to mention that there, <laughs> that there is a, a, a scene hidden in the credits, because I really don't want people to miss it. I'm very Stay sure. till the end. Don't leave after the Stay credits. Stay till the end of the credits. That's it, exactly. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the movie is very good. Like I said, it plays off legitimate fears that people have. Very well done. Releases on IFC Midnight. It's going to be on video on demand. 
it's it's one of those movies where I I honestly well, I do want to tell people about this one because I want you to see this. I it's one of those I I legitimately like, so I kind of want to share it with people, and I think a lot of people are going to have that feeling as well. I hope so. That would be that would be fabulous. I just want I just want people to like it at the end of the day. So what's um, if I may ask, what's next for you? What are, what are we looking at? Anything in development? Anything we could talk about? Yeah, absolutely. I'm. Um, so I have a, I have a couple of movies um, already in post production. I have a small role in uh, Warren Beatty's film um, called The Rules Don't Apply, and that's Ooh. coming out this year. I'm also in a movie called Odious. I just sh- shot another movie with Travis Z, and I called The Midnight Man, which is a super horrific horror um, in the vein of sort of like a new Freddy Krueger, if you will. Um, so I executive produced that, and I and I have a small role in that movie, which I did uh, for him as a favor because he wants to have me in every single movie he does. Um, and I'm about to shoot a film in Canada called The Field, which is sort of similar to The Maze Runner, except much more adult and um uh, the ca- the characters are more more adult and uh, it's it's a bit more horrific. It's more of a horror film, and that's um, a m- much bigger budget, bigger cost. And then after that, I'm doing a period drama with an Academy Award nominated director and a um, and an Emmy Award winning writer, uh, and that's um, a really big acting challenge that I'm really looking forward to. And um, my company just optioned another movie that's very similar to Seven Meets the Sounds of the Lambs. So well, that sounds we're terrifying. <laughs> yes, it's 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 such a cool script. I mean, we we found it, and I said, my gosh, I absolutely have to have this. Uh, absolutely have to have produce this script and possibly um, play the play the female role in it. Um, but that's we've got so much on our plate at the moment. It's probably not going to be until spring next year is when we would shoot it but if if anybody out there liked those sort of elevated intelligent genre films like like those two the silence of the lambs and uh, seven then this is definitely a movie that you would love because it combines the relationship between a young woman and this absolute psychopath um and uh, also has a lot of mysterious um, murders going on around this small town that she has to try and solve. So it's it's going to be exciting. I wish it, I wish it were already done so I could watch it. <laughs> I, I would like I, I would say like oh I'm surprised you're so busy, but I guess success has been something that you have never just shied away from. You I mean you have a BA in journalism, and you have a I think you have a juris doctorate, don't you, in law? I do. I have a, yes, I do. <laughs> I have a law degree. You, just, um, just stay busy with everything. Oh. I must succeed for yes. everything I do. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Um, I think that you, you get one spin at the wheel, so why not spin it for all you've got, you know? That's sort of my my motto. I wake up each morning and I think, my gosh, what can I get done today? So I'm a certificate collector. <laughs> well, you, like for I said, your, for your hard work definitely shows in, in the things that you do on screen and apparently in life as well. Louise, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Guys, see Intruder, June 24th, video on demand, IFC Midnight. Be terrified of this movie because I'm a grown man. (laughs) And And stay for the end. (laughs) Yes, stay for the end. Absolutely stay for the end. And make sure you check all of your closets and lock all of your doors and look under the bed and and in the cabinet (laughs) to make sure nothing's there. Thanks for that. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.